Sometimes in keyframe animation, you want to move multiple layers as one. By default, every layer moves on its own and is animated separately. But by parenting, you can make one element follow another. The parent will lead the motion and the child element will do everything the parent does. Parenting elements is always useful if you need to move them as one or if you want to create a hierarchy. For example, when you're building a 2D cutout animation puppet. If you are just Googling this topic right now and you want to know real quick how to make a parent in OpenToons, you can jump to this timestamp where I just show you the clicks that you need to make to parent an element to another. If you have a little bit more time, maybe you want to do an animation exercise and practice working in OpenToons. We're going to animate this example animation here, which is a lot easier to animate when we use a parent. This video is part of a larger 2D animation class. If you're just starting out learning 2D animation, you might want to check out the other videos as well. Let's jump into the tutorial. So let's go over here on frame one, click here to create our first vector layer, hit OK. And this is going to be our ghost character. While staying on frame one, where we already created the first drawing level, we're going to create another one, which will open up a new column, a second layer. And here we're going to put the object that he will be pushing. OK, let's add some color. For that, we're going to go on the ghost layer first. And on the ghost level, we're going to create a new fill for his body. Use the fill tool, make sure that all the lines are close. Ah, it could be a little bit brighter. I'm having auto checked, so I can just change the color and see the color change life in the viewport. Let's go ghost. And then we're going to go to the level of the pumpkin and add a new fill color here and another one for the green top. Now you might be thinking we have two elements. We want to move two elements. Now that must be it. <laughs> False. We need a third element, a third layer that moves both the ghost and the pumpkin together. We need to add a new drawing level. Once again, make sure that you are on frame one where all the columns are already full. And if you hit on this button to create a new level. It will create a new level in a new column. And this is going to be our helper level that is going to be moving both of them together. And we can even create a little helper controller that can make it easier to grab and move this layer around. If we uncheck the eye here, we can still see it while we're animating in the viewport. But if we click up here to render our image, how it will later be exported, you can see that this layer does not get exported. Now let's start animating things. Click on the column with the ghost, switch to the animate tool that we use to create the animation keyframes. First, I want to move the center point for the ghost by switching the animate tool to center dragging it over here, maybe testing it with the rotation tool because I, I want him to like push against the pumpkin. And I think this is a nice rotation point for him to have. If you have never set keyframes in any animation software, you might want to watch our video about how to do keyframe animation in OpenToons. Now, before we actually set keyframes, I undid everything so that I don't have a, a key symbol down here. Let's uh, check our preferences first and file preferences animation. I want to have the default interpolation set to speed in, speed out. If you want to know more about this, uh, just watch the video that I previously mentioned. It will make our motions start and end very softly, which is something that we want in this case. Let's increase the exposure for all layers so we have some time to play around with our animation. And now my mind is already going crazy with trying to put a little story here and put some thoughts into the ghost's uh, head. But of course, this is not the focus of this tutorial. This is uh, focusing on the tech. But I would like to have at least a, a two step process of the ghost coming a little closer and then deciding that he wants to push 
the pumpkin. So we're going to set a starting keyframe with Z maybe after four frames. Then he's going to move over very quickly here up to frame 11. I'm going to use the position tool to put him closer to the pumpkin. So on frame 15, we're just going to press Z again. But these two keyframes here, they are they have the same exact position data. There's nothing happening between those two keyframes. And then he's coming a little closer and presses his head against the pumpkin to push it around. They're really making some contact here. Let's play this and see how it looks. This is a bit fast, so maybe let's make the move longer, selecting all the keyframes shifting everything over. I'm trying to put all keyframes on uneven frame numbers. This is a thing that a lot of uh, 2D animators advise. Uh, the reasons for that I will explain in another video in greater detail. Let's put in a little anticipation before he goes into the pumpkin. And we do that by making some time here. And, you know, instead of having him just melt into that position, let's copy that first keyframe here as a base, put it maybe here. And as you see right now, those two keyframes are identical and we use the second keyframe as a starting point for our anticipation, which basically means he goes a little bit in the opposite direction and tilts in the opposite direction. Yeah, that's much better and maybe have this a little bit longer. There's one thing I would like to change about the animation curves. Right now, you can see that there's an ease before the ghost touches the pumpkin, meaning that the spacings are getting smaller. I don't want that. I want him to slam his head into the pumpkin full speed because, you know, he really needs to push. So let's do a visit to the function editor, more specifically the graph editor that we can find here for column one. And there we see the wonderful animation functions. I also explained this in greater detail in the keyframe animation video. So this is that last motion into the pumpkin. Let's just have it go very steep into the pumpkin for both the rotation and the position. Let's see how that looks. That's nice, that's what I want. Now we need to move both of them, the ghost and the pumpkin together. And instead of animating it like this, saying that, okay, we're gonna do a, a frame for the ghost and then we take the pumpkin and also shift it there. This can get pretty messy because if you don't pay very close attention to have the animation curves and all the settings exactly the same, your pumpkin and ghost might start to wobble and lose itself and then crash into each other. So that's why we're gonna use our helper layer instead and parent those two layers to it. For this, we're gonna need to bring up the schematic editor. We find that in Windows, schematic, and here we see a node representation of our scene. To ease the confusion a little bit, let's just name our layers real, real quick. This is ghost, this is pumpkin, this is the parent. And now what we can do is make the parent helper a higher level than the other two. And the way we do this is we're gonna use these points and connect them like this. So that now if we are moving the parent helper with the animate tool, both elements are moving, but they still can move individually if I just move that one layer directly. Let's undo this. So the actual animation of the parent helper starts here after the ghost made contact with the pumpkin. The pumpkin is pretty heavy, so it needs some time to start moving. Uh, let's set our first keyframe with Z. Move a little over. I hold shift so it stays on the same axis and doesn't go up and down. 
Well, this is too fast. Let's add some more exposure. Exposure! There we go. Just a little more. And now to really sell the weight of the pumpkin, we're gonna go back to the function editor, more specifically the animation curve so we can see it a little better and make sure that we have the parent helper selected. Now we're gonna drag out this tangent handle to make sure that we have a long big ease and this should really sell some weight. Let's switch off the parent helper layer. Maybe that's a little bit distracting to see it like that. Yeah. And we can just tweak the timing some more until we're happy. And just to spice up our animation just a little bit, let's give it some finishing touches. After the pumpkin came to a stop, the ghost can go back to a more relaxed stance. So let's put in a keyframe and we can actually copy a keyframe already, an earlier one, maybe this one where he's just standing next to the pumpkin. And this is the cool thing about parenting, it just shifted everything over to the right. So even if we're gonna copy and paste this keyframe, it's not gonna go back to that position right here, but it's going to go back into that position relative to the parent helper. So he will go back to that position, but also shift it to the right because the parent helper shifted everything. That was too fast. That was too slow. Let's play around with the curves a little bit. Oh yeah, that doesn't look right. Oh, what is happening here? Our animation, although we were expecting it to stay the same, there's actually some motion. Can you see that? Our ghost is sinking into the pumpkin and this is because those animation curves are somehow wobbling a bit. That is a side effect of the speed in, speed out curves. We have this curve now overshooting, which although this and this value is the same, causes it to be an animation there, to be a motion here. So we can get rid of this by clicking on that section of the curve, right clicking and turning that section into a linear motion. And as you can see, now there's no overshoot, it's just going straight into that position and holding it. And the ghost is no longer sinking into the pumpkin. Now let's correct the animation curves for when he comes out. For this, we need to switch this section back to speed in and speed out. And for some reason, it doesn't let me do it. So I don't know, I just switched to something else first and then to speed in, speed out. Mm, that seems to work, okay. Um, yeah, just make sure that this has a little bit of a tangent and that those two tangents are roughly the same in speed in, speed out. A little less here, like this. Now, for some extra animation detail, we're gonna make the pumpkin slide right after the ghost releases it. Because the ghost puts so much pressure on it that it is charged with a certain kind of momentum. And the moment that the ghost lets go, the pumpkin still has a little bit of momentum that causes it to slide for not long, maybe just two or four frames. To do that, we're gonna animate the pumpkin layer for the first time, which we actually haven't done so far. Add a keyframe with Z. Let's shift the center po point for the pumpkin, although I'm not sure we're gonna need that rotation point really, but you know, just to have everything in order. Go four frames into the future and have it slide just a little bit. We're also going to need to look at the animation curves, make sure that we have the right layer selected in the function editor so we see the curves. There we go. We don't want this to have an ease because the motion is not just starting now, it was already in progress because of the parent helper which did the animation so far. We're kind of handing over the motion from the parent helper to the pumpkin. So there is no ease here. It's more like this. And maybe let's have a really strong ease here. Let's see how that looks. 
Yeah, it looks like the pumpkin is speeding up after the ghost let go. That is not how it should look. You can also go to the parent helper to make sure that there's a little bit of residual energy in the parent helper. So we don't want to have this this great plateau here. We want to still have some motion energy left. We can also verify this a little bit with the onion skin. Make sure that the spacing right after the ghost let go still is somewhat the same size here. Here we have like a constant spacing and now you can play around with the curve. Yeah, to make sure that the spacing right after the ghost lets go is still the same size as the spacings before. Or maybe a little bit less. And then it gets less and less. Maybe this is a little bit too much. I just wanted to show you how passing over the motion from the parent to the child would work. Yeah, I would probably make this even more subtle, shorten this so it's only like two frames. Uh, now we need to fix the motion here. See what happens right after the impact. Oh, that is far too big of a spacing. And the pumpkin is just moving too far. Now it's barely noticeable, but I tell you, those little touches, they can make a difference. Now, last thing I want to do is I want to go into our ghost layer and change the facial expression when our ghost is starting to push. We hit D on the timeline here to create a new drawing that has all the same lines and fills from drawing number one. But now this is drawing number two. And in drawing number two, we can change the eyes. Maybe this is something we can better see in the level editor. So let's jump over and in the level editor, we see uh, the previous drawing shining through, so we know where the eyes are, but we don't have any of the keyframe rotation and position data applied. So we can just go in and draw the eyes in the correct position, jump back into the timeline, and there we go. Now, of course, the facial expression should also change back when our ghost lets go. We can just delete the frames that we have here. Let's double click on that last frame here and change the name from C2, which is the drawing with the eyes closed. You can see the level name is C and we have drawing number two, so one with the eyes closed, to C1, which is the drawing with the eyes open. Oh, I can't use the arrow keys here. All right. Okay, so we're just gonna put a one here, hit enter, and there we go, the eyes are open again. And now we can finish the exposure here all the way to the end. And now our ghost opens the eyes after he is done pushing. All right, that's it. In this video, you have learned how parenting in OpenTunes works. We have a new premium tutorial out for purchase or to watch included in your Skillshare subscription about how to create a good logo animation like this one. You're gonna learn different effects like sliding text into masks, creating a handwritten text effect, and then uh, creating all this craziness that is going on in this icon. In any case, keep on animating. Thank you very much for watching.